All right, guys. This is the uh, Maurice Hurst film breakdown here. Just found out, you know, um, he went to a, a COVID list. So I thought, hey, might as well. I had this in the works, um, you know, all weekend. So I figured might as well put this up here. Okay. So first thing about Maurice Hurst, everyone knew. He's got issues stopping the run going back to last year uh, or the last two years. Really, that, this is the biggest question mark about him. And I would say he has developed a lot in this area. Okay, he's done a, a really good job. Now, watch him. He gets zone away, so he matches uh, the zone step from this guard. Doesn't get cut block here, even though the guy's ankle biting him. Okay, and the best part about it is he has vision on the runner throws this guy off of him a little throw by lowers his weight and is able to get in on a run stop and i think that he learned this from, from hankins because hankins did this a lot on film okay uh fantastic uh move to not only you know all the technical stuff but also finish here's another one he's zone step zone step away from him again so he beats the blocker across the face dips rips finishes okay this is not something that Maurice Hurst has done in the past. Um, New Orleans did more of a gap scheme. They were coming right at him and not zoning him so much. And we see him here lock out on this guy. Um, and, you know, extend, shed, find, find the guy, find the ball carrier here, okay? This is something I thought was interesting, so I thought I'd put this in here. Um, this is a trap scheme. And so... When he gets off, he sees the down block, but he feels the tackle, and he doesn't feel the tackle block down on him. So immediately he knows, okay, I'm getting trapped here, right? Um, and so you watch the recognition. You see him flip his eyes to this guard who's coming and shed this guy. You would love to see him finish here, okay? Um, but the problem is he gets his feet stopped, and when you stop your feet going up against Alvin Kamara, there's no way you're bringing this cat down, right? So um, some good. Uh, some things that obviously he can continue to improve on, get, get a little uh, tackle for a loss here or something like that. Um, the, the, and this is a really fun play. This is not a play that I think that uh, you see three techniques uh, make very often. Usually maybe a defensive end or, you know, like an apex overhang player will make a play like this. And you see he beats that cut block, recognizes the, jets, uh, the jet sweep, and gets outside, has the quickness to chase down Julian Edelman. And make a fantastic play for a three technique. So in the run, he has improved a lot. Now the pass rush, we already, we always knew. Maurice Hurst, this is what he does, and we still see him having some good uh, technique here. This is the uh, sack that he credited to share with uh, Carl Nassib. What I love about this is look at the hands. Get the put he he finds the elbow, get, gets the guy going one way. Okay, and he's now this blocker's off balance, and when he's off balance, he has to reset his feet. To anchor okay and so by the time he gets his feet reset he's already three yards four yards in the backfield and Maurice Hurst all he has to do is just keep on driving and finish so that's a fantastic rep uh, from Maurice Hurst to get his first sack we got some hand usage some power uh, you know putting it all together in terms of the pass rush okay um, and this is another one here that I really love. This led to the interception, uh, the pressure that led to the interception against Drew Brees. He's three technique, so he's got a two-way go. He can crash the A-gap or, or B-gap, or he can come inside to the A-gap. Now, when he sees this guard overset, okay, or set wide, he goes ahead and clubs, dips, and, and shoots the A-gap here. Now, look at the bend. Look at the ankle flexion, okay? It's, you know, you don't really see three techniques have that very often, um, and the ones that do are household names, right? So if he can keep on putting reps together like this, you know, eventually everyone, not just Raider Nation, is going to be hip to him, okay? Um, this is probably my favorite pass rush rep of his uh, just this last Sunday here. He knows that that uh, center is going to come out and help this guard, okay? So he can't always shoot inside when he has a two-way go. Sometimes he just has to win outside the guard's shoulder, right? And... So even though he knows this guard is, is setting wide on him, he still is trying to win through the outside shoulder, and he does this little judo. He pulls the arm down, okay, throws this guy off balance. 
which is a, a really fun, fantastic little move there. And then he's got vision on the quarterback. Okay, finds the quarterback, tries to string another move together, but ends up knowing, okay, now I just got to bat this ball down, right? And, um, you know, that's just that, that's just heady, savvy stuff here from Maurice Hurst. Stringing moves together, affecting the quarterback, right? Um, but, you know, teams are going to, are, are catching on that he's their best interior rusher, okay? And what New England ended up doing is they doubled him, not with the center in the guard, but with the tackle in the guard and left their tight end to block uh, the defensive end one-on-one, -on -one, which is not a very common thing, I would say. And so, you know, this is just the development of Maurice Hurst. Now that he's got some of these guys' attention, he's going to have to um, learn some new counters, learn some new ways to get after the rusher, um, when he's drawing this kind of attention where he's getting double teamed by a tackle and a guard again Not a very common thing um, for a three technique to be honest with you. Okay um, And then you know again, he's gonna get the attention so you know in this week He got doubled a lot. They were slanting the protection to him. They were trying to take him out of the game um, and leaving everyone else one-on-one -on -one. and what you'd hope is that these other rushers can also start continue to develop and get better and win their one-on-ones but right now every team they're focusing on race her so this is why it's such a huge loss for the Raiders going into the uh, you know divisional matchup against the Chiefs is that they're they're literally without their best uh, rusher okay so uh, it's it's a big blow and the other reason why it's a big blow is the amount of energy and effort and hustle that Maurice Harris plays with. You know, we could put together an entire highlight of this guy just chasing down plays and making plays where, you know, he really has no business making as a 290-pound def interior defensive lineman running guys down in the open field off screen passes and off, off, off sweeps, outside runs, things like that. So the effort, the hustle is something really special for, uh, for Maurice Hurst. He's got that in spades, you know, um, it adds uh, an element to your, uh, to your defense when you got guys in the interior defensive line who are able to make plays out in space, chase guys down on top of being good pass rushers on top of now he's developed and he's, uh, you know, interior run defender as well. Things that we haven't been able to see from him in the past. Um, you know, he's, he's gotten to the point where there's no weaknesses in his game. And he's, you know, definitely without a doubt, 100% outplaying Malik Collins, right? So, um, I, I don't know why he's been on a pitch count. He outsnapped Malik Collins in week four, but I, and I, you know, fully expected that to continue to be the trend. But I guess now, um, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be on Malik Collins, but hopefully, you know, he gets cleared soon. And he can get back at it because right now he's probably um, the most consistent performer in the Raiders defense. All right, guys. Tape Don't Lie podcast. Holla at you.